Hello everybody, today we're looking at motion tweens in Adobe Animate CC. All we need to know to get started is that motion tweens can be applied to text and symbols, so graphic symbols, movie clips, or buttons. And motion tweens can be used to animate all sorts of properties like the position, rotation, skew, scale, and color effects. And if you're using a movie clip symbol, you can also animate properties of filters like blurs or glows. Let's get started by creating a motion tween. And you can see that I've got a drawing on the stage, which we will have to prepare for tweening by turning it into a symbol. And I can do that by pressing F8. I'm going to use a graphic symbol because I like graphic symbols. And to create the motion tween, I'm going to right click on the timeline and select create motion tween. You can see that the frames with the motion tween have now turned yellow. And that's how we visually see that it is a motion tween. To see the motion tween in action, let's go to the last frame of the tween and just move the symbol. Two things have happened here. First of all, Adobe Animate has created a keyframe for us. And secondly, a motion path has appeared, going between the original position of the symbol and the new position that we've moved it to. If we look closely at the motion path, you can see a lot of little dots. Each dot on the motion path represents a frame on the timeline. If you're familiar with vector lines in Adobe Animate, the motion path can be adjusted in the same way. One option is to use the selection tool shortcut V. And what the selection tool lets you do is adjust the beginning or end points of the motion path or clicking in the middle, you can adjust the curve of the line. Another option is to use the sub selection tool shortcut A and the sub selection tool gives you a bit more control because you can play with the bezier handles of the motion path. And even after adjusting the motion path, we can see that the symbol continues to move along it. If you go to any frame in between the two keyframes, moving the symbol again will create a new keyframe and Adobe Animate automatically adjusts the motion path to try and smoothly include the new keyframe. Clicking and dragging the keyframe along the timeline will let you adjust the speed and timing of the animation which you can visually see by the dots along the motion path. Remember that each dot represents one frame. So this is showing us that it's really quick towards the end. We can also adjust the speed of the entire motion tween by dragging the handles on the last frame. Notice that the keyframes move along with the length of the motion tween. If you want to remove a keyframe, you can do this by selecting the keyframe in the timeline, right clicking, and then selecting clear keyframes. Next up, we're going to take a look at the graph and we can open this by double clicking on the motion tween. Now I know that the graph can seem quite complicated and overwhelming at first sight, but I think it's quite important to understand at least the basics of this graph. So I'm going to try and explain it as simply as I can. The first thing I want to do is get rid of this motion tween so that we can start with a fresh new motion tween with nothing on the graph. I'm going to the last frame of the motion tween. And what I want to do now is move this symbol horizontally. I'm holding shift as I drag it. So it snaps to the X axis and it doesn't go up or down. And I'm going to let go of it here. So now we have a perfectly horizontal motion path. It's going only to the right. So let's take a look at the graph. The graph shows that we are animating the location or position of the symbol. And the two properties that make up the symbol's position is the X and Y coordinates. If you're not familiar with X and Y coordinates, the X coordinate refers to everything along a horizontal axis whereas the Y coordinate refers to up and down or a vertical axis. Looking at the graph of the X coordinate, we can see that it is increasing as we go through the timeline. So it's increasing over time. And we know that this is actually happening because the symbol is moving along the X coordinate over time. 
On the other hand, the symbol is not moving up or down. So when we go inside the Y coordinates graph, we see a perfectly flat line. Nothing's happening, nothing's changing. It's worth noting that we can adjust the motion path from within the graph. So if I want the symbol to move up or down along the Y axis as well, I can just pull this point and the motion path changes as well. However, I find that it's usually a lot easier and more intuitive to just do it visually on the stage by moving the motion path directly. And most of the time you can get the same results. One thing that I find a lot easier to do with the graph open is adding easing. And I know that you can add easing by clicking on the timeline, going to properties and pulling this to the left to add an ease in, which means it starts slow and then gets faster. Or you can go the other way and add an ease out, which means that it starts quick and then slows down. But that's the extent of what you can do from the properties panel. If you want to add more complex eases, you have to use this little button down here, which brings up some of Adobe Animate's presets for easing. I'm not going to go through all of them, but let's take a look at stop and start. To understand what these graphs mean, just keep in mind that steeper or more vertical lines like this one means faster animation. And this one as well, faster animation. Whereas flatter lines or lines that are more horizontal means that there is less animation happening. So keeping that in mind, this graph will mean that it starts out fast, slows down, and then ends fast. And applying that to our motion tween, you can also see that this is visually represented in the dots along the motion path. You can also make your own custom eases down here. And the one I find myself using the most often is an ease in and out. So I want something to start slowly, speed up, and then slow down again towards the end so that you get a nice smooth motion. And that should look like this. And that pretty much covers the basics of motion tweens. We've only animated the position in this example, but the same concepts apply to everything else like rotation or scale. So if I wanted the symbol to get larger, I would select it at the correct frame and make it bigger. At the same time, I can also add a little bit of rotation. And there we have it. And one thing that's also worth mentioning before I finish the video is that you can also adjust the rotation from the properties panel. So let's make it rotate twice and an extra 30 degrees. I want it to go counterclockwise. And so now Pikachu is rotating twice counterclockwise. Another thing you can do is click orient to path, which makes the symbol point in the direction of the path. It will make a bit more sense if I have the symbol pointing in the right direction in the first place. And let's have it end, yeah, in the right direction as well. So now you can see that it follows the path, which is handy if you're doing things like um, top-down racing cars. Speaking of cars, I can hear sirens. And I think I'm going to end the video here. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. Bye.